it's a pretty easy process uh, to get a good idea of whether or not it's time to to pump it um, and potentially time to have somebody else uh, come out and take a closer look so I'll just show you kind of the quick quick way of doing that so the first thing you gotta do is find your septic tank uh, that could be uh, difficult maybe it's easy this one we happen to have the lids right at the surface so once you've located your septic tank opening up this inlet side this is the line that comes from the house so this is your inlet side Get this shovel happens. down in there you can already tell can already feel it's pretty thick and if you kind of open that hole up a little bit you can see this is this is quite thick uh, at least a foot thick so this definitely needs to go um, sometimes when you pull that open you'll see the water floating down there and a good way to decide how thick the crust is is about two-thirds of the crust will be below the water line so if I was to pull that back and see two inches floating above the water that would mean there's four inches approximately below the water making your total six inches thick um, so again the levels are eight inches on top 16 inches on the bottom the bottom's a little more difficult to check out um, I'll show you how we do it um, and then give you a suggestion on how you can do it okay so we have this tool we call a sludge judge or a core sampler um, this we will stick down the the inlet T we don't want to stick it through the crust because the crust is too thick it won't go in and it just messes up the thing so we'll stick that all the way to the bottom and then when we pull it out we will see a good sample of what the level in the tank looks like so that's about that first blue line is 12 inches another six so we got about 18 inches of, of sludge in this septic tank so definitely time to get the sludge and crust out of this septic tank so the way that you can do it as a homeowner sounds a little funny but if you take a long pole steal your husband's best tube sock and pull that sock up as tight from the bottom of the pole as you can and duct tape it up as high as you can on the pole then if you stick that sock down through that inlet tee so you're not sticking it through all the crust because the crust will mess up your sock stick that all the way to the bottom twist it around a couple times and then pull it back out you'll see on the sock the level of how thick the crust is again if you get to this point if the top looks like that then there's no sense in checking the bottom I mean, you can for fun if you want um, but it's time to get it out the reason you pull it out or have somebody suck it out is because after those solid levels are at that point they're starting to close in on what we call the the clear zone that clear zone of the tank it needs to be a clear zone and so you can also call that clear zone the agitation zone so that everything rushing into your septic tank will come in through that that T and agitate a certain volume of the septic tank your whole goal and purpose of pumping the septic tank is to maintain a clear zone so that when it comes in and agitates that that volume it's not pushing solids out into your drain field and plugging the soil pores and causing failure don't let anybody tell you that it's a dependent on how many years it's been a lot of places you know federal state rules will suggest every three to five years well, I find that the average is more like five to eight years um, but with that said you know there's plenty of people we have found them where after a year it's time to do it and we meet people all the time that are at 8, 10, 12 years and things are looking good maybe just time to be pumped so it's very dependent on how much junk you're putting in the tank um, one of the major things that people overuse is a garbage disposal you want to keep that that undigested food out of your septic tank um, that food can create multiple problems if you have a septic uh, a concrete septic tank that food digesting in the tank will create excessive amounts of hydrogen sulfide hydrogen sulfide as a gas will eat the concrete of your septic tank and when it mixes with water it creates hydrogen sulfide 
I mean uh, sulfuric acid. And so you create this acidic environment in your septic tank where the good natural enzymes and bacteria can't live and so nothing gets digested you end up with this dead foul septic tank um, that's going to need to be pumped more often. Um, I'll show you a little bit of a sign this tank has got a lot of hydrogen sulfide in it um, and I'll show you how to check that when you open your septic tank. Okay. So when you open your septic tank one of the things you're going to want to look at if, if there isn't a lot of crust or if there's not you know that much crust you still want to look at kind of the color of it. If you look at this tank, you can see how white and gray all this is. Well, that's because of all the hydrogen sulfide that's being created in here. A good healthy crust, good healthy septic system is going to be like a, a brown. Uh, this is what a healthy septic system should look like. and not smell like rotten eggs, not smell like sulfur. If this was a concrete septic tank, which luckily it's not, we'd be seeing a lot of concrete deterioration going on in here. So on a plastic tank, not as big of a deal other than that it's not digesting the junk that's in here. It's just going to collect um, on, a, on a concrete septic tank, uh, a little bit bigger deal. It's going to start eating the concrete of the tank. This is is called an inlet T or sometimes some people call it an inlet baffle and what that does is that keeps the inflow from rushing in across the top and agitating the floating crust. So everything comes in laterally in this line and then it's directed down underneath this, this crust which again like I said earlier is the agitation zone so it's going to go down in your tank and agitate that middle volume of the tank. So you want to make sure that's in place. Okay, when your pumper is done pumping, the tank should be clean. Now it doesn't need to be scrubbed down, you know, but you want them to take all the sludge and crust with them. There's a lot of pumpers around that will claim that you want them to leave several inches of sludge in the bottom to help the system restart and that is simply not the case it's an old thing that pumper has been saying for years so they don't have to do the job right now is it going to matter if there's a half inch of sludge in the bottom no but you don't want inches of sludge that's just years from your you know off of how far you can go until you got to pump again so you want the tank clean